Hey there, welcome back for the sixth installment of this deck showcase series. I am Brent Cook and I am showing you my physical copies of Magic the Gathering decks. If you're interested in the previous five, you could definitely check those out. There will also be cards that slide in throughout the top of this video today. But why don't we hop right on in? There's four more of these coming, just a heads up. So if you're interested in more, make sure to subscribe. But let's just hop in and talk about my commander deck, Goto Bandit Warlord. So why does the Swarm guy play Goto, right? Like it's a little bit odd that the guy who only plays Swarm combo would play essentially Moon Stompy Commander. Well, I was originally the combo guy in Commander. Some people credit with me with creating CDH. I don't, I don't think I had any influence on that if I'm being honest, but uh, I did create a really broken draw new deck back in 2008 or sometime around there, I believe. And what happened was they kept on banning cards out of my deck. And it wasn't like one or two. It was like three to five. And on the last one, I decided that enough was enough. And I was going to quit playing that deck because they kept on banning cards out of it. And I was just going to stick to my mono red commander, which allowed me to sell some of the cards in the other deck to build other things I was working on at the time. So I kept this one deck throughout the years. And honestly... I don't I haven't played a whole lot of commander since 2014 um, at that time period my friend group sort of dissipated and since then I've played a few pickup games here or there they're usually 1v1 versus some friends uh, I don't play actively in pods or anything like that that's just not who I am so I haven't played a whole lot in the last almost decade but you know Honestly, I, I've played two games with this deck since last year's update, uh, both 1v1 with uh, a friend that owns the store. So, you know, looking to change that this year. I th As of right now, I'm currently building uh, Rog Silas Storm Combo to feature some more Commander content here on this channel. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet, if it's physical paper gameplay or magic online you're always welcome to let me know in the comment section down below but i'm going to try to bring you some more commander stuff in 2022 that's one of my goals here at the epic storm all right without further ado let's actually talk about goto so this is the giant commander's arsenal goto i've never actually really used it i keep it in my deck box and it's just kind of beat at this point uh it does have like a giant oversized sleeve that it came with but it's really really beat I missed a chance to get it signed when I sent this in. I just didn't think of it. So this giant Goto is not signed. That said, I do have another card down below that needs to be signed by Paulo Parente. So maybe I'll get it signed with that. And then over here we have my Japanese foil signed Commander Goto Bandit Warlord. What a badass. What a true hero. Um, I've had this deck since I think 2009. And... Uh, yeah, it's sort of been a lot of fun to play. It's gotten better and better over the years, which you would hope with more printings, right? But the level that it's improved is quite impressive. When I originally kept it, it was my casual deck to play against other friends. And over the years, it's gotten a bunch of upgrades uh, from Grafted Exoskeleton all the way up to Helm of the Host, plus Dockside Extortionist, plus a bunch of other things. So the deck's fairly competitive now. I'd say it's somewhere in between... Um, that level right before cdh and cdh like if you want to play in cdh you can but it's not gonna hang um but it's usually a little too good for the more casual tables somewhere in there uh that's where this deck lives all right then down here we have our chandra album for the only playable chandra left uh, you'll see her down below. And then some treasure tokens for Strike It Rich, Dockside Extortionist, all that good stuff. 20 Mountains. These are the mountains that I use. I started playing during Invasion, so I use Invasion Basics. I have one art for each, and obviously for Mountain, I chose this Jeff Miracola Mountain. Uh, I don't know why I did, but I did. So <laughs> uh, back in 2001, 2002, I, I selected this mountain, and I've used it ever since yeah moving on all right so down here we have uh, i'm gonna forget the name of this all right so I, I added a cheat sheet over here so i could remember card names better uh i'm already blowing this sandstone needle 
Yikes, I'm already ruining this video. But I got this signed this year by Alan Rabinowitz, uh, thanks to Mark Aronowitz, who has a group signing uh, page that you can check out in the description down below. And I sent this in to Mark this year to get signed. Over here, we have Dwarven Runes, which taps for a red if you're unfamiliar, it comes into play tapped, and then you could sacrifice it to add red, red, originally printed in Fallen Empires, but this is the only Japanese printing, therefore I am playing this. I believe it's fourth edition. So honestly, if I'm being completely honest, I'm not sure if this card is good enough to make the cut. I added it this year. I literally have not played it. Uh, so who knows? If you have experience playing Dwarven Mine, uh, let me know how it is. If it stinks, I can just go ahead and cut it. Not, you know, waste my time trying to get it signed, that sort of thing. And then over here, we have Crystal Vein by Pat Morrissey. I've actually owned these uh, gemstone... I, I just said it. Crystal Vein. There we go. Crystal Vein. Uh, since like 2013, when Peter Robb suggested that we try them in the Epic Storm as a way of combating days. Surprise, surprise. The colorless land wasn't very good in the five-color storm combo deck. But I kept that set this entire time. And recently I've swapped the foil one into the deck for the Japanese one. Japanese has been my theme, but for some reason when I built my commander deck, I decided that foil was going to be the theme. I've switched that over the last year or so, so now I'm getting rid of the cards that were English foil only for cards that are Japanese uh, if possible. So I'm doing that change. Uh, you'll see that throughout the video. But yeah, so now we have Crystal Vein, City of Traders by Kev Walker. This card's just beautiful. Uh, reserve list, so it's increased in price quite a bit since I've gotten it. I believe I paid 110 for this. And I don't even want to know what they're worth now. It's probably way too much. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to think about that. Ancient Tomb. I, uh, Ultimate Masters, this came out. I think I got the, this for like 80 bucks at the time. I think they're like 120 now if you're interested. So they haven't gone up that much. And uh, How Han signs via mail. And they respond very quickly through Facebook. So if you're interested in getting your uh, Ancient Tomb signed, they also did uh, Windswept Teeth and some other playable cards. So definitely check out their catalog. Super great artist and really friendly, loves to sign cards. Artifact lands, primarily for Mox Opal at this point. That's the reason worth, they're worth playing because you just want your Opal to be active as early as possible. Um, yeah, plus like, I don't know, land destruction effects, this gets to live. Kind of cool. Um, yeah, moving on, Cavern of Souls. This is actually out being signed right now. So this was a scan I did before it went out. Uh, it's currently with uh, Matt Schneider, who does Mountain Mage Signing Group. Once again, that is in the description down below. And if you're interested in getting your cavern signed, Matt's the person to contact. So definitely check that out. And it's pretty good because Uncounterable Goto really helps versus those blue decks. And then once it's in play... You can equip it with Lightning Greaves or something else in order to make sure that it sticks around. So Cavern is pretty huge. Strip Mine Wasteland Dust Bowl. Um, at least back when I used to play a lot, if I'm being honest, like 2014 era Commander. Guy's Cradle and other lands like that, uh, Cabal Coffers, were issues. So these cards are not ideal in CDH. You don't really want to just be targeting one player's lands. But lands like Coffers and Cradle do cause problems, so that's why these were seeing play at least back then. Like I said, I've kept this deck together and I've updated it over the last eight or so years, but I'm not an active player anymore. I'm just not a commander player at heart. I think it really fell apart for me once I lost my friend group. So um, bear in mind that this deck might not be the most competitive thing anymore with these effects. They might still be good. Who knows? Certainly not me. But I've updated my deck for what I think is competitive, even though I don't actually get to use it that often anymore. Jewel Lotus accelerates into Goto uh, for free, so pretty huge. Obviously, you want to play Goto as early as possible. Jewel Lotus helps with that. Shout out to my friend Mika, who got the sign for me this year at the non-Grand Prix in Vegas. So Mika managed to get this jeweled lotus signed as well as all of these treasure tokens up here make mika you're the real hero thank you um yeah i also was like kind of smart with how i bought my jeweled lotus i waited like five months after uh commander whatever this is uh was released and i bought it at an all-time low i ended up getting it for 180 japanese foil they've started to climb back up since then 
but I definitely bought it at a low point and uh yeah sometimes that helps not buying stuff right when it comes out lotus petal i've talked about this in like three videos at this point but i really wish that this was signed in black if you have japanese lotus petals signed in black hit me up i want to own them <laughs> i'm so tired of this silver sharpie crap um moving on mox opal and chrome mox these are essentially leftovers from my legacy deck i own four of each but i only play three of each in the epic storm so i do have these spare i've had these for pretty much forever uh and they're just gorgeous cards i mean i love them max diamond i don't want to own this anymore i really really don't one of my goals for 2022 is to convert this into a japanese uh max diamond so there's a pretty big price difference right now. It's like this foil one is worth like $130 more. So I'm probably just going to sell this and then buy a Japanese one. I've been putting it off. I've wanted to do this for like eight months and I just like keep on not doing it. So I'll do it at some point. Uh, if you want to own this and you have a Japanese one, hit me up. Maybe we can work out a deal. All right, moving on, Grim Monolith. I sold this in 2017, and I've just never gotten another one because I don't play this deck hardly ever. So uh, I had a chance to get rid of my foil Grim Monolith for my playset of Japanese foil ponders that I talk about in the Epic Storm deck showcase video. I've just never bothered to get another one. Grim Monolith uh, being reserve list, the price on them is super high, and I don't play this deck that often, so why spend a bunch of money on cards I'm not going to use? Basalt Monolith, once again, Hao Han, and they signed via Facebook. Uh, this came out in Double Masters, and I was pretty excited because for a long time I had a German one, and my thing really is Japanese cards, Japanese and foils. So managed to get this signed. They're really quick with their turnaround. I definitely recommend uh, checking them out. And this thing, I'm not going to remember its name. I'm just going to look. Uh, Unstable Obelisk. I mean, you should be able to guess that via the art, right? And if you're unfamiliar, it taps for a man of any, or I'm sorry, a colorless mana, and then you can pay seven mana to destroy a permanent. This was pretty good. Uh, like it, so this came out in Commander 14, and it was really good around the time because a bunch of my friends, uh, right before we all quit playing together, were running things like Moat and Ensnaring Bridge that stopped Goto from winning. So this was Acceleration that had that built-in backup mode at answering those cards i don't even know if this card's still playable in today's age it might not be but it is sort of nice that it can get you out of those weird uh situations or at least was warm power stone i've yet to see a japanese foil one signed by henry higginbottom i'd like to get this signed as far as i know they don't do signings but i've reached out to them a few times via email and never heard back if you have any information hit me up i'd love to get this signed they have a really nice signature Cursed Mirror. This card's pretty sweet. So when it enters the battlefield, uh, well, one it taps for red. When it enters the battlefield, you can have it uh, enter as a copy of a creature. So you can have it enter as a copy of Goto, and then that would trigger Goto to go get another artifact. So you can go get, uh, for example, Lightning Greaves. So the first one might have gotten, I don't know, something else, and then you play Cursed Mirror, and then you attack for lethal. That's the idea here. And if you're tight on mana, it's a, it's acceleration. So it's sort of versatile, sort of nice to have. Uh, I'll be honest, I think I've cast it once. So I don't have a whole lot of experience with this card. Uh, Hedron something. Hedron Archive. I was 50% correct, right? You got to give me that. Uh, Craig T. Spearing, they signed this at an event. I don't remember what event it was, but if you're unfamiliar, it taps for two mana of any color, and then you can pay two and sacrifice it to draw two cards. It is a double Mind Stone. Fairly solid. I think I skipped over my Mind Stone. Am I missing a, an image? I am missing an image. Whoops. Playing your favorite combo deck in paper just got so much easier with the Epic Storm mini token pack. You can pick one up at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $13. It includes 64 double-sided mini tokens. That's 128 tokens total. And they include 10 black, 10 blue, 10 red, 5 green, 5 white, 3 colorless, 20 storm counters. That means that you can count your way all the way up to 20 for grape shot. 
everyone's favorite Stormwind condition. A Galvanic Relay Exile Indicator, four treasure tokens for Strike It Rich, and then 10 monk tokens for our vintage friends. It also has Slime Time Live! Eve Progenitor Ooze tokens with the power and toughness already built in to make playing in paper so much easier. No fumbling around with dice, we've got you covered. Make sure to go grab those if you're playing modern. And then Squirrels vs. Goblins, Chatterstorm vs. Empty the Warrens, the Battle of the Ages. You definitely need 20 Squirrel tokens and 20 Goblin tokens. You're going to love this mini token pack, I promise. And once again, you can grab that at theepicstorm.com slash shop. All right, I'm back and I have the missing image. Sorry about that. I did this earlier while multitasking. There was an image that slipped through the cracks. I'm back. It's here. When you view this video, it will already be fixed on the website. So here we have zero mana acceleration that would have been before this one, but oh well. Um, and here's our Mind Stone. This is the promo one. I don't know why. I don't even like promos, but I think at the time it was the only Japanese foil. Um, I might even be wrong about that, but I think that's the reason I got it. So I think there's another one now that isn't a promo. I'm probably not going to grab it. I don't play this deck enough to change it. And here we have Manifold Key. Pretty big upgrade for Vintage since it allows your constructs to be unblockable. But here in Commander, it's just an additional key to untap your Mana Vault over here, your Mana Crypt, Everflowing Chalice, Soul Ring. It just ends up being something that can generate a few extra mana here or there. Um, and that's sometimes very, very helpful. So yeah, these two keys are both very strong. Here we have a Lion's Eye Diamond. I actually picked up a fifth one right before COVID hit at a really, really good price for a Japanese one. And now they've like quadrupled in price since then. I think I paid 130 for mine, maybe 160. And there was a point over COVID that they hit like $700. They've come down a little bit since then, but yeah, they're just so insane. And I have five Japanese Lion's Eye Diamonds now. Uh, definitely bought in at the right time. Mana Crypt. This card, Matt, I uh, talked about this in my vintage video, but Matt Stewart signed my first one in purple. I ended up having to sell that and buy another one and then like made sure that I got it signed in black. So if you're going to get your card signed by Matt Stewart, really, really uh, embrace or enforce the fact that you want your signature signed in black and not some random color. Uh, because I really only like black signatures, which makes this overflowing chalice quite painful for me. I hate this Everflowing Chalice. Um, when I handed it over to Steve Argyle, this is my own fault. Uh, I was too timid at the time to correct Steve Argyle because he saw it and immediately grabbed this gold marker and started signing it. And uh, I didn't want to like correct him. I was too nervous. And I mean, I got this signed in like 2009, 2010. And nowadays, I would definitely correct the artist if they're going to sign in gold marker, but I was too afraid at the time, and now I'm stuck with this ever-flowing chalice that I hate. Uh, so there is a way of removing signatures. So if I ever see Steve Argyle again, I'm probably going to wipe the signature off and then try to get it signed again without the uh, the gold. If we ever get back to Grand Prix, uh, it will be nice. Soul Ring currently out being signed. I talked about that in, in another video. This is just photoshopped in. But uh, yeah, first ever Japanese foil Soul Ring. I don't love that it's full art, but it is the first ever Japanese foil Soul Ring, so that's what I'm using. All right, moving back down to here. Um, we talked about Hedron Ar Archive. Grand Dynamo. This is one of those cards that last year, after I uploaded, I'm like, this is a card that still needs to be finished for this deck. I'm just going to buy one. So I bought it. It was $45. I got it signed through Mark Arano. It's his group signing uh, service. Wow. Ron Spears' signature just looks really awesome on this thing. Really happy with how it turned out. Um, yeah, no complaints for me. This card's really, really sweet. Strike It Rich. This card I was really excited about for Legacy, and then it just wasn't quite good enough, but it does have a home here in Commander at Accelerating into Godo, which is pretty sweet. Plus, Vulcan Baga's signature is just really, really awesome. Seething Song, Martina. Yeah, I have nothing else to say about that. Like, it accelerates into your commander. That's good enough, right? Jessica's Will. So, unfortunately, I this card did not arrive back to me in time. It's a, So, when this video goes live, I might have gotten my mail for tomorrow because this video is planned. It's currently going to go live at 1, and my mail arrives around 12.30 to 2. This card will be in my mailbox tomorrow. 
uh, it just didn't arrive back to me in time. So unfortunately, you don't get to see it. Maybe in next year's video update, you'll see it then. But uh, unfortunately, it did not come in time. So rip Jessica's will. All right. So uh, Iron Crag Feet also accelerates into Goto, but you can't cast any spells after it. But that doesn't matter. Usually after you cast Goto, you're just equipping and attacking. So Iron Crag Feet does the job. The triple red can be an issue, but usually isn't. And then down here, Chandra Torch of Defiance, the only playable Planeswalker left in this deck. Over the years, they've gone down. Last year's video, we had two. Or last year's deck showcase, we had two. It wasn't a video. But we had two. So over the years, we've lost Karn. Uh, seven mana Karn, that is. Uh, Chandra Pyromancer. There was another Chandra for a little bit, a six mana one. And now we're just down to Torch of Defiance. Uh, Koth left us and now like the reason that Chandra is playable is that she accelerates into Goto and then can clear a blocker um, I mean that's pretty much what you want out of any Planeswalker that can make the cut for this deck and she's barely playable if I'm being honest but also she just looks so sweet look at that Magnali signature it's just beautiful yeah really awesome card Diamond Lion this card is also going to arrive in my inbox tomorrow that said uh, in the middle of last year or middle of this year, I guess it's still 2021, I had the thought of starting to scan my cards before I ship them out to get signed. I actually shipped this out to Izzy in January of 2021, so it's been gone for almost a full year at this point. Um, but Howard Lion, I shipped out in like June, so sometime in the middle of the year I decided to start scanning my cards. And unfortunately it was not in January of last year, so no photo of Jessica's will. But this will arrive in my inbox tomorrow revoker unfortunately it's a reprint i think at the time that i bought it the originals were still really really expensive i could probably get an original print one at this point in my life but why bother if i'm being honest like i just don't use this deck that often so it feels a little bit like a waste plus like this card still gets the job done right i don't know maybe one day i'll get a Mir mirrodin besieged one but i don't even know if that's true like i just might not who knows <laughs> sign by kev walker uh, and then over here we have Dockside Extortionist. I uploaded my video last year and everyone in the comments was just like, where's your Dockside Extortionist? That card's too good. Well, yeah, probably. Uh, but who plays Magic anymore? Who's play who plays Commander anymore? It's not like it's the most popular thing in Magic the Gathering, unlike Legacy, uh, which is extremely popular with a huge fan base. So uh, yeah, I picked up a Dockside so all of you can quit yelling at me. Jerks. Uh, but yeah, I have this now and I have a bunch of Japanese full of treasures for it. So maybe one day I'll cast it and I'll get to feel the joy of getting like 10 treasure tokens. I've never done it. Maybe one day it'll happen. Who knows? Seaman Spirit Guide, also a reprint. I got this for 15 bucks. It felt like a steal. Uh, the original English foil one was like 80 at the time. So it's just free money in my pocket. Plus this is Japanese, even if it is a reprint. Maybe one day I'll get the, uh, the original Planar Chaos one. Who knows? I did own a set of uh, original Planar Chaos ones at one point in my life. Uh, before Ad Nauseam was printed, four was the correct number to be playing in the Epic Storm. So 2007 into 2008, uh, Ad Nauseam was printed in 2008. So whenever that happened, uh, I just immediately cut my Simian Spirit Guides and I didn't look back. Well, a point came where I wish that I still owned them because now they're like $200 each, but I probably needed the money at the time, if I'm being honest. Not super rich here, um, but oh well, live and learn, right? Blood Sun! Pretty good with the uh, effects like City of Traders in our deck. It stops a bunch of those crazy lands I was talking about before. It also cantrips in like Blood Moon. Am I missing another one? Oh no. Hey, you're still watching. Don't forget to like this video leave a comment and subscribe. If you're looking to make a purchase from Card Hoarder, TCG Player, or Amazon, and are looking to support us, you can open up our description down below, and in there you will find our affiliate links. Those same links are found on the homepage of the Epic Storm, but that's not all. We've included a Card Hoarder button on our website that will load the Epic Storm in your Card Hoarder cart to make life simple for you. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. So what happened is I duplicated a another deck showcase in order to make this one. 
but a couple of the file names were off. So it's just missing images that I have to go back and fix. So unfortunately, this is just gonna be a bunch of work. I'm sorry that I'm ruining this video, but let's just move forward. Uh, Magus of the Moon, this is one of those cards where I could get the one that I want. It's only like $120 for a Japanese foil, but I just never use this deck. So it feels weird buying cards that are expensive for it. Um, that's pretty much like the truth of it. I don't know. I feel like I've said that too many times in this video and it's going to look bad, but it, it's just the truth. Uh, yeah. So over here we have something ogre. The, this card's bananas, but I can't think of it. Treasonous ogre. There we go. So you can pay life in order to pay three life in order to add a red mana. And then it has some irrelevant first ability. But basically, three life equals a red mana. You can just spit out Goto plus equip it uh, for four mana, essentially. So you use your life total as just this degenerate resource with Treasonous Ogre. It's extremely powerful. And then down over here, we have Fury, another Pyrokinesis effect, essentially. Uh, very good. Like th With this deck, you just really want to clear blockers. That's the big thing with it. So Pyrokinesis and Fury do that very effectively uh, because they don't cost you any tempo which is really what we're looking for with competitive EDH. We're just looking for tempo. We're not looking uh, for value. So that's what these cards do well. Jeremy Jarvis, Swift Foot Boots. Um, oh no, this is Lightning Greaves. This is Swift Foot Boots. Lightning Greaves. I need to get these this signed. I've needed to get this signed for like a decade at this point, but Jeremy Jarvis is a really hard person to get your card signed through, and that's just the truth. I have another ad nauseum I want to get signed, but Jeremy Jarvis is just extremely difficult, so uh, maybe one day. Swift Up Boots, Svetlan Velenov. Card just looks really sweet. Um, yeah. Conqueror's Flail. I'm not even sure if this card's good. I've never played it, uh, but what it says is, our creature will end up getting plus one plus one as long as we have a permanent uh, for each color whatever I, I butchered that if you have five colors it gets plus five plus five but because we're mono red maybe goto gets plus one plus one um i guess you would have goto in play so it would and then your opponents can't cast spells in your turn if it's equipped i don't know if this is actually playable but a bunch of people in the comment section last year kept on telling me i should be playing it it looks like trash to me if i'm being honest but it was a very cheap card to get so i grabbed one Sword of Fire Eyes. A lot of people were like, you need to cut that card from your deck. It's not very good. This is the last card in the deck that I'm playing uh, for like nostalgia's sake. So I cut the uh, Gauntlet of Might. I don't know if you noticed that, but Gauntlet was not in the mana section. It was gone uh, because it's just not competitive enough, even though it's worth like $5,000, which is just way too much money. And I cut the wildfire that you'll see down below in the actress section. So this is the last card from the era that I played a ton of commander. And this card was busted at the time. It's probably not good enough now, but it's sort of just like, a, I want to play this card. So I'm going to play it. If you don't want to play sort of fire ice, you don't have to, but it stops your creature from getting bounced, bolted plus card advantage. I don't know. It's kind of tough for a red deck to do. Certifier Ace just does it all, and it's just so beautiful. Look at that nice Mark Zug signature. It's just chef's kiss. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. So all you people that hate this card, sucks to suck. All right, uh, Grafted Exoskeleton. The way that Goto works with Exoskeleton is it can one-shot a single opponent. So if you're playing CDH and you're in this big pod, this card isn't really it unless you're just looking to quickly knock out one person before they kill everyone. Um, but that said, you can just murder one opponent very quickly because Goto gets two combat steps, so you'll give your opponent 10 poison very, very quickly with Exoskeleton. That's the idea behind it. Um, if you're just looking to clear an entire table, you probably want Helm of the Host right here. And over here we have Hammer and Nazden. They gave it a Japanese foil printing uh, recently, and I got that signed. Look how awesome this looks. Uh, but it was just previously Japanese, and now you can also get a foil, which is really awesome. Helm of the Host is sort of the core of the deck because it allows just infinite attack steps and infinite Godos, uh, which is obviously very nice. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's what I have to say about it. Uh, it's sort of bananas. It's just a lot of mana because it, it costs you six up front for the Goto, five for the Helm. It's a lot of mana, the, but that's how you do clear a table of four people. And then over here we have Graf Digger's Cage. Stops a lot of the combo decks. 
Breach is a very fairly popular card. So, you know, Cage doing its thing. Needle. Uh, it is not the original printing. I'm sorry. Uh, it's just way too expensive for what it is. But instead, we have the sweet art and it's signed. What's not to love? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's fine. And Sorcerer Spyglass, Kieran Yonner, really sweet looking card. Another needle effect. Um, I mean, these cards are sort of self-explanatory. Defense Grid, leftover from a Legacy deck. I, I do own four of these, so I just grabbed one of them, slid them in. Uh, you don't want your go to dying to removal, which is one of the big things. Yeah. Winter Orb. This deck used to be a lot more land-based, so that's why Winter Orb is here. Japanese foil now, due to EMA. But uh, we still have Blood Moon and Blood Sun, as you can see here. Uh, in the past, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. My, the deck used to be extremely land destruction based. Here we have Wildfire, Destructive Force, Decree of Annihilation. Uh, I don't know if I've ever actually played this in the deck, but Boom Bust. We used to play a lot of LD, and people get really, really upset at me. And this card was originally a part of it. I still think it's good enough with all the artifact mana we have in this deck. Winter Orb is sort of just like a one mana lock piece or two mana lock piece where you don't need to play all the land destruction. Uh, it does its job. I think it's fine. It makes people angry, which it probably means it's doing something right. Blood Moon. Uh, Commander is a super greedy format. People, you know, have their like one of mana bases for Tainted Pact. Blood Moon sort of messes that up. So that's the idea. Blood Sun punishes fetch land decks. Um, for example, the Rog Silas deck that I'm building has like eight or nine fetch lands in it. And Blood Sun just sort of wrecks all of those people. I do need to get it signed. I've never even tried to reach out to the artist to get this signed. I should probably do that at some point soon. Um, yeah. Stranglehold, no searching, no extra turns. Pretty strong. Um yeah, John Stanko, who did Prismatic Strands that I'm also waiting, or that I'm getting back in tomorrow's mail day. It's going to be great. I cannot wait. Uh, yeah, but this was John Stanko's first playable card in my eyes, and now I'm getting back Prismatic Strands, so I'm pretty thrilled. Um, Experimental Frenzy. I'm not sure if this card is actually good enough anymore, but there was a time period where it seemed like it would have been. Who knows? If you have strong opinions, feel free to let me know in the comment section. Uh, but you can play cards off the top of your deck, which is pretty much what you need out of a red deck. Warping Whale counters sorcery speed removal on your creature, or it accelerates you in a Godo. What's not to love there? A bunch of other uh, anti-blue, anti-counter spell sort of effects here. Deflecting Swats also coming back to me in the mail tomorrow from Izzy. Um, this was a card that a lot of people said last year that I needed to add into the deck. It is called... Can I think of it on my own? No, I'm going to cheat. Magnetic Theft. I actually sent this out to get signed. The artist has their address on their uh, website, but they didn't respond to my email, so I shipped it to them and it came back to me. So uh, unfortunately, it did not get signed this year. I really did try. Uh, maybe I'll find a group signing at some point. But yeah, uh, I've yet to cast it. I've yet to cast it. Maybe one day. I'm sure a bunch of you have, and you'll tell me how it is. I imagine that it's pretty good. I mean, instead of paying five mana for Helm of the Host, you could pay one, which, you know, murdering your opponents quicker is usually better. Gamble. This card took over a year to come back to me. I sent this out to get signed in 2019. I got it back like a month and a half ago. Um, I don't know what took Winona Nelson so long, but it was a really, really long time. So if you're looking at your card signed by her, be prepared. It's, there's a chance that it's just going to take forever. So um, there's your warning. Chattering Spree. I talked about this in my Epic Storm video, but no one actually knows who the real Pat Lee is. And a bunch of people say that they do and they have signatures, but none of them ever look the same. So I don't know if this will ever be signed. Um, that's just th sort of the truth behind it. Vandal Blast, Seb McKinnon. I'd like to get this signed at some point. Seb does one or two signings per year. I always seem to miss them without realizing it, so it's sort of my own fault. But I would like to get this Vandal Blast signed eventually. All right. Whew, halfway there. I've only messed this video up three times. All right. By Force destroys a bunch of artifacts. What's not to like there? Uh, it's also scalable, which is kind of sweet for a commander. A Braid. I bought this already signed. 
I have three more that are out being signed, so I'm gonna have like this weird hybrid signature set. But uh do you think this card's playable? Maybe it's not. I don't know. Who knows anything nowadays? Mog Salvage. This is a card I picked up this year. This is the other card I need to get signed by Paulo Parente other than my giant Goto. So I'd like to have that happen this year. Uh, it's free if your opponent controls an island. Destroy target artifact. Pretty good. Here we have Crash signed by my good friend Landon Swartz because unfortunately Doug Chaffee's no longer with us. Uh, and Landon is one of my favorite Epic Storm pilots and this is an Epic Storm card. Um... But one of the changes I made this year was upping my land count to 20 so I could play more effects like Crash, Mog Salvage, Mind Collapse, a bunch of those things. I almost added in Pulverize. I didn't, but I almost added it in. Uh, unfortunately, our deck plays way too many artifacts for Pulverize to be correct, so uh, Crash, Mog Salvage are the cards. Busy and Mortars. I don't know if this card is actually good enough anymore. It's something I've gone back and forth on. It just seems like two mana isn't really what you want to be doing to kill somebody's creature uh feel free to let me know if i'm wrong here it does kill urza so the few times i did play this year was against my opponent's uh my friend's urza deck and it killed urza very nicely so maybe that's good enough maybe it's not i don't know feel free to tell me um chaos warp they did create a japanese foil and i just like never realized it so i had mine from whatever set it was originally from and I just thought that was the only one. And I think it was this year, maybe it was last year, that I bought the Japanese foil. And I felt foolish that this was printed in 2014. And I just never realized that they made a Japanese foil for like six years. Mind Collapse, signed by Bug Cook. I was extremely excited to get these back. And I talked about this in my modern video, that Bug Cook's uh, signature is also B Cook, because that's how I sign my name. My name's a lot more scribbly the way that I sign, but I thought this was super cool. So shout outs to Bud. Fiery Confluence, and once again, Kieran Yanner, just really awesome signature, really versatile card. Even though it's a little bit clunky, I think this is a hard card to justify cutting. And then down here we have uh, Ruination. I got this signed in 2020, so it was signed in last year's video, but there was a very long time, almost a decade, where Dermot Power didn't sign. It was just kind of cool to get this back from Dermot signed, so uh, thank you, Dermot. Cave in once again. Tempo is a huge thing. Same thing with this pyroblast or pyrokinesis here, where being able to just pitch red cards from your hand to cast these makes them a lot more viable to clear the way for Goto. So um, yeah, pitch uh, removal spells fairly strong. Extra cards. Okay, almost done with this. <sighs> Sorry, I I've just been recording all day and I'm getting a little tired. Um, here I don't have a cheat sheet for a bunch of these, but I believe this is, is it in here? Smoldering Spires. There we go. Um, I did play this card for a number of years because it makes Goto unblockable for the Grafted Exoskeleton, but Goto sort of moved away from that and it's become a Helm of the Host deck. So the unblockable aspect of Goto, same thing with his Rogue's Passage, just doesn't matter as much anymore as commander became more and more competitive these sort of effects just weren't as good and here we have like elemental village or something like that i don't know if you have an elemental it comes into play untapped but basically you just pay a red uh tap it target creature gains haste same thing with this land hand rear battlements they're effectively the same thing although this land would come into play tapped but it just tapped for red uh these sort of effects they're just not good enough i tried them for a few years they just were kind of stinky so i moved away from them all the Bandit Lord, once again, coming into play tap just isn't quite good enough for haste. Um, I really, for a long time, wanted to get a Japanese full of one of this, but they were just stupid expensive, like $300. And I think it ended up being a good thing because I don't think that this effect is good enough anymore. Um, what is this thing called again? Inventor's Fair. There we go. I'm not old. Yeah, so uh, basically I just don't think four mana having to have Metalcraft to search your deck is a powerful enough effect if you're trying to be competitive. So Adventure's Fair ended up being cut. It's a fine card, um, but I think it's a little bit more on the casual side. Blast Zone was for a similar reason. I originally added in Blast Zone because I was thinking of effects like Ensnaring Bridge and Moat and all that good stuff because Spine of Ishna was cut. 
But I think the amount of games where your opponents have those cards is just like super rare that it's not worth playing um, Spine of Ishna or Blast Zone or anything that would answer them. So uh, sort of like Relics of the Past in a way. And then this is another Relic of the Past back when the deck was a little bit more casual. Um, why am I blanking on it? Tectonic Edge. There we go. Signed by Vince Pross. Really cool looking card. Unfortunately, just not playable anymore. First Totem was a card that I was told to add last year, but I think it's just like... So one, it stops your Ogre from making mana. It stops Diamond Lion. I think there's too much anti-synergy because both those cards are fairly critical. I get that you want to lock your opponents out, but like, are the green like elf decks really popular anymore? I'm not sure if they are. I don't follow Commander. I really don't. So... Uh, maybe if those decks were like super popular, you could play it, but it seemed like it wasn't good enough to me. Feel free to tell me if I'm wrong. I'm always willing to learn, grow, all that good stuff. Um, and then here we have Key to the City. I thought this card was so sweet for a couple of years. Uh, I really did. Like, I loved this card. And, well, it was great because it allowed you to filter cards that were bad in some matchups into p potentially playable cards while making go to unblockable. Like I mentioned, for a couple of years, making Gono Unblockable was really huge with Grafted Exoskeleton. So I loved Key to the City. I think the truth of it is, this card is sort of a casual card. Um, but it's just so awesome. I was really bummed when the artist signed it in uh, silver, though. Like, when you ask for a card to be signed in black and it gets signed in silver, it's like a shot to the heart. Uh, but they really wanted to sign it in silver, so uh, here we are. <laughs> uh, Guardian Idol. Uh, Ed Beard, who just, it's impossible to get Ed Beard to sign cards. Uh, there was a time period in EDH when I was playing where if your commander got tucked via Hinder or Chaos Warp, you could not put it back to the command zone. So back then we ran a lot of effects like Guardian Idol, Mistress Factory, Mutable. So that way you had something to equip after, but then they changed the rules and these effects just weren't worth playing anymore. So sort of relics of the past once again. Uh, but it's fun to think about that stuff every once in a while. And here we have my Gauntlet of Might. The, like, $5,000 card I do not want to own. Uh, but it's, like, impossible to sell. I've posted this in a few, like, Alpha Beta group or Alpha 40 groups. It is Alpha. It's not Beta. So it's an Alpha Gauntlet of Might. And it's in really good condition. But every time I've posted it anywhere for sale, I just get extremely lowballed. The, uh, the Alpha 40 crowd is... They're all friends for the most part. I don't want to say inbred, but they exchange cards for much less than what they're worth. And when I try to sell my stuff, they're like, yeah, well, my friend bought one last week for $800. Uh, well, good for your friend. Uh, but I just can't seem to sell mine for anywhere near what it's worth. If you want to own it for a reasonable price, hit me up. But yeah, I'm probably just going to keep this until I get an offer that's reasonable. I got it from my friend Trevor Brown. Shoutouts to Trevor as a birthday gift in 2007. Trevor spent $70 on it. And uh, as you could tell from Commander, plus time and reserve list and all that other crazy stuff, this card's worth a boatload of money now. And it's just weird how that stuff works out. For a long time, I couldn't dream of not playing this card in the deck, and here it is in the extra section now. Kind of breaks my heart. Spine of Ishna. I mentioned Moat and all those other cards. That's really what this card was for. But ultimately, it's just extremely stinky. It's not worth playing. Uh, Jit, sort of similar. Like, it's just too low a power level. And I think that can actually be said for a number of these uh, cards here. Like, uh, Sword of Vengeance, Haunted Plate Mail, Batter Skull, Argentum Armor, Sword of Body and Mind, uh, Feast and Famine. These cards are all sort of underwhelming. Uh, there was a time period where I played Body and Mind because at the time we were playing a lot of Zombie Horde. Uh, I do own a foil Zombie Horde. That I haven't used in almost a decade. Uh, but attacking the horde with body and mind, it was essentially like dealing it extra damage. So I played body and mind for that version of commander, which was kind of fun. But it wasn't very good when you were trying to actually be competitive in non-zombie horde games. Beast and Famine was really nice for like comboing with Winter Orb, but ultimately was sort of cute. And then these cards always sort of stunk in my opinion, but people thought that they were playable, including me. Batter Skull. So, Batter Skull, I actually own two of these. Uh, I bought it from a dealer at a uh, 
a PTQ in New Jersey. Probably whenever the Sphinx's Rev deck was like tearing up standard, because I, that's the deck that I was playing that day. I bought it from a dealer. It was eighty dollars. I actually traded in a Badlands for fifty-five dollars towards this Batter Skull. And when I got home, I pulled the sleeve out, went to go put it in my Goto deck, and there was two of them in the sleeve. So I ended up getting two Batter Skulls that were Japanese foil at the time for eighty dollars. It made me feel a little bit better about trading in that Badlands uh, years later. But look at this Mark Zug signature. It's just beautiful. Argenta Marmor. You can't tell from the photo, but it's actually crimped down here a little bit. Or maybe it's on the top that it's crimped. I don't know. It's crimped Japanese foil sign. It's like the pinnacle of pimp. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, it's just so much mana. Like, anytime I drew it, I would just get mad at myself. And there were some games where you would tutor it with Goto and then just double vindicate someone once you attacked. But it always felt really, really win more. And it never could blow up Moat because you can't attack. So that was always a problem for me back in the day. Obviously... When you're watching this video, you're like, Bryant, Moat doesn't matter anymore. I'm aware of that, but keep in mind, I haven't really played Commander in half a decade or more. Um, Faithless Looting. I mean, you can figure out why that card's decent. Uh, Gap Blast. I've considered um, if this is better or not than... Um, I said it earlier. Why can't I think of the name now? Where are you? Mizium Mortars. I've wondered if it's better or not than Mizium Mortars. I don't have a strong opinion. If you do, feel free to let me know. Roast. And then... Oh, what is this card called? Volcanic Eruption. I didn't have to cheat to remember that one. I thought this card was so sweet. So, this card obviously came out in the time period where I wasn't playing a lot of Commander. But when I did play the few times at that time period... Uh, Edric decks were really popular in my area, so it would come down and it would just clear a bunch of little elves. Excuse me. And then on the second chapter, it would ramp you into Goto. And then on the third chapter, it would clear the rest of the creatures. That way, your Goto knocked face. It was just literally perfect. But ultimately, I think this card probably just isn't competitive enough. But I wish that it was. It's just so sweet. It does everything that this deck wants to do. It's just like kind of slow. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Like, this card's just so awesome, though. Like, if I had my Druthers, this would probably still be in the deck. It's my deck, so it should, it should probably be in there. If you think that this should be, let me know in the comment section down below and what you would cut, because I'd love to add it back. Uh, destructive Tampering, Destroy an Artifact, or uh, Make Your Creatures Unblockable. Just too cute. Three mana is... It's really expensive for that effect, in my opinion. Uh, Rack and Ruin. It's a shame that this card isn't playable. Uh, it's just like worse than Biforce, and Biforce is like a card that might not be playable because Rack and Rune, when I was a kid, this was like a $100 foil um, for an English foil. And then this is Japanese foil signed, but ultimately now it's just like worthless and unplayable, which is kind of sad. But a very young Bryant Cook remembers this card just being like the bee's knees. And then over here we have some formerly playable Planeswalkers that I talked about in the beginning Koth, Chandra Pyromancer. Koth could accelerate you with its minus ability into Goto, but ultimately the rest of it was sort of useless. And then Chandra Pyromancer could make Goto unblockable while providing card advantage, but that's not just really what this deck is about anymore, so you kind of just got to move on. Flame Tongue Kabu! One of my all time favorite Magic the Gathering cards. That was the era that I started playing, so I was a really big fan of Flame Tongue. Uh, it was my first list for this deck, but eventually over time was cut. Just not that competitive, but gee golly, do I love it. And then over here we have our land destruction spells that I mentioned earlier. We have Boom Bust. Um, I can't think of what this is called. It saw play in Legacy during the Miracles era, but I can't think of it off the top of my head at the moment. But it destroys all non-basic lands, and then for each land it destroys each player, searches their deck for a basic and puts it into play. So it's pretty good against like all the um, tainted pack decks once again, but it's just not playable. Uh, plus, you don't really want to be giving your opponent's basics like in your Blood Moon deck. That was one of the big things with it, so that should not be in there. And then we have Wildfire, Destructive Force, Decree. These were cards from the early era that I still love. Uh, my friend Ethan Formula Chea challenged me last year to get a Japanese full assigned one. I did, and now it's cut from the deck. So thank you, Ethan. It's all your fault. I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, this card just like 
it reminds me so much of my childhood because seventh came out shortly after invasion and i think seventh foils are also just like the pinnacle of magic so uh this card's just really really awesome also ron spencer art's just like the best so this wildfire is great uh destructive force never really felt playable it always felt like seven was slightly too much plus five damage meant that goto equipped with the sword at the time would die unless it was sort of fire ice which was kind of an issue so four was the sweet spot five was sort of a lot uh so this was a card that was cut earlier than wildfire and then over here we have roiling uh earthquake it got a japanese foil upgrade in double masters but i think this card's probably just worse than cave for the most part um yeah and then bonfire i got this at a gp i don't remember when but it was like a year after it rotated out of standard for eight dollars and i was like this card is way too cool to be worth eight dollars so i picked it up ended up getting it signed years later and uh i played it for a few years but it was ultimately cut sadly and that's the end of this video that i've at least massacred a few times so i am sorry about that if you're looking for other content that i possibly didn't mess up Here's five more decks and formats for you to check out. Over here's the actual products that I use. These are not paid advertisements. These are truly what I use because I love them. You could definitely check these out. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching. I'm sorry that I messed this up a few times. I do appreciate you. Thank you for bearing with me. Have a great day. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.